Oh no, was I? Was it silent the whole time? Oh my god! Thank you, Mitch, for stopping in. I thought I, I thought I had it. I must have clicked it by accident. Oh my goodness! All right, well, I'm the worst. Uh, but thank you for coming in and saying that. I was about to continue on. Oh, wow! Nine minutes down the drain. Well, thank you, Mitch. Um, I guess I'm gonna start over. Um, yeah, you appreciate you, brother. Um, so sorry about that first nine minutes. I'm going to have to cut that out in YouTube studio. Um, well, we are talking about vulnerability and, uh, empathy. It's, um, something to really practice and focus on, especially in the, uh, counseling community. Again, I'm just going to state for the fact, cause apparently I was muted. Um, I'm not a professional. I am working to become a professional. I'm in my master's for clinical counseling. And so whatever you hear here, take it with a grain of salt because again, I'm not a professional, um, do your own research, but, um, I do do a little bit here and there. And obviously I know from anecdotally within my college and my master's level, um, schooling. So, um, empathy, empathy, let's get there. So, I mean, obviously see now I lost my train of thought because again, empathy is just kind of being fine tuned with your emotions and really understanding, or really understanding and trying to put yourself in others' perspectives. It's very, goes along very closely with the idea of, um, or that saying, um, walk a mile in someone else's shoes, and then you'll really be able to understand kind of who they are and where, they, where they're coming from when it comes to them physically, emotionally, mentally, and all kind of, kind of things like that. So, um, but with empathy, you also have to know that boundary of your setting that's, um, you may be able to understand and express yourself emotionally and trying to understand them emotionally, but you, if you have not gone through that um, situation or experience that they have gone through, pretending to and showing empathy can may have a reverse effect where others know that you haven't gone through anything like that and will be more standoffish and not um, accept your empathy. Um, so just make sure you're being very apparent when you're showing empathy that you're not pretending like you've gone through something similar, but more that you're just understanding their strong sense of emotion, whether it comes to despair, anger, um, sadness, or, or even anything of, of super be or like being happy or any feelings of grandeur or, or anything like that. Just trying to like meet them where they are emotionally, but not understand their experience if you haven't gone through something like that. If you can, you can offer up some that you've gone through something similar or something like that. That usually, um, that little self-disclosure, especially in a client counselor relationship, it really kind of helps bring in the kind of uh, feeling that they're not alone. And that can also be a, a huge factor when um, when you're being empathetic with someone else. And that, that really helps out. Um, with with one just your friends and family relationships and two if you're a client uh counselor that those those are huge different things with the self disclosure um then kind of moving on to vulnerability it's a very difficult thing to kind of under or practice um because in you really are kind of um being vulnerable is putting yourself in a state where it's like high risk state where you can be um, hurt emotionally or physically. Uh, vulnerability is being in a sense where you don't have control of a lot of the variables and it can one become, it can be detrimental or it can be high rewarding as well. So I talked earlier while I was muted. Um, thank you for um, speak, speaking to that Mitch. Um, I'm going to say thank you to him because He's a real one for that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, just kind of continuing on. Um, being vulnerable is a, is a difficult thing to be. I mean, um, and especially with others first to begin with, that is a very, very difficult thing to start. So, but there are also things that we talk about um, like in our, in the master's program, how, how to be vulnerable, what can we do to practice being vulnerable? And um, a very big first step is practicing vulnerability with yourself. You don't have to go out into the world and be vulnerable with relationships, friendships, family members, loved ones, significant others. That's a hard thing to do. And, 
I don't advise kind of jumping at the bit and trying to go for it. Um, but eventually you want to work towards being able to do that because being vulnerable also brings high rewards as well. Um, but kind of going back to what I mentioned before, being vulnerable with yourself, you can do, there's a bunch of different techniques. I'd advise you to look some up, kind of find ones that fit your, um, personality, um, and, and your kind of personality traits because, um, these won't work all for everybody, but, um, one that works for me, my self-awareness is, is, um, very, very well. I take pride in my self-awareness. So, one that has worked for me in the past was um, being vulnerable with myself was asking questions I may not wanted the answer to um, and kind of diving into diving in deeper and deeper of, of the question and what I may have been feeling at the time. So I mentioned before while I was muted, um, you I may have been pissed off and I'm really angry and I asked myself, why, why are we angry? Why, what's going on? And I was, thinking to myself, oh, my professor didn't hear me out, listen to what I had to say. Um, and then I was like, why didn't they do that? I'm like, was that their fault? Like, did they completely write me off? And then kind of reflecting more onto it, they didn't. In reality, I kind of came and asking that question again, is my perception correct? Is my reality correct in the grand scheme of things? Because my reality can be truth to me, but my reality isn't truth to everyone else. And that is a very hard concept to grasp. But again, I love philosophy as well. So that kind of helps me kind of think about that. And basically, I was realizing that it wasn't their, their fault. It was more my fault that I didn't advocate further for myself. I didn't get my point across correctly. And by them not understanding... I didn't advocate for myself and I was really angry at myself, but I didn't have anywhere to turn that to because I would thought I wanted it to them. So just like kind of practicing self-awareness, like I've mentioned in previous mental health Mondays is, um, is definitely a thing that works for me. Um, it is a, a, a trait or a technique that we talk about that can definitely help, um, practice vulnerability with yourself. We talk about being vulnerable with clients to an extent, um, there still has to be that professionalism that comes from being a counselor and kind of not pretending like you have your stuff together, but being able to, because if you're too vulnerable with them, they may feel that, oh my goodness, I don't have my life in check and this person's supposed to have their life in check, but not really um, because again, we're all traversing this thing we called life. And um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh, wow. I really did lose, lose my train of thought. That was something. Um, hmm. What was I saying? So basically, I was saying we are traversing this thing in life. Um, oh, yeah. So a client's not going to want someone who's being too vulnerable with them, um, with them because they're, they're the ones that need um, feelings of like empathy. And they're the ones that are vulnerable right now. And two vulnerable people... Um, can rarely be able to be um, helpful in, in that situation. So um, so we talk about being vulnerable to an extent, um, but like I mentioned previously, the high risk, high reward. So vulnerability is good because it is able to strengthen relationships. If you're able to put yourself in a position where someone may either help you physically or emotionally or hurt you physically or emotionally and they take um, help, that's going to be able to strengthen your thing because they had the opportunity to do something and um, most likely benefit them but hurt you. If they do the opposite of that, they're really that's really a bond that you really need to take um, that's very apparent in your life. And that's something that can really strengthen bonds and relationships. Um, it just helps because doing something like that, it also um, just helps expressing emotions openly. And um, when you're talking about things such as like rejection, abandonment, or even just judgment. I mean, as humans, we're very judgy people. We try to, we judge right away. And I think if you are judging right away, kind of reflect on that a little bit. What's going on? Like, why are you so quick to judge others? Um, 
like where's that coming from is that coming from because you may be deeply judging yourself you may be subconsciously judging yourself you may think that others are judging you constantly so this is how i get back at them really reflect on that and that can be a, a step in being vulnerable with yourself um vulnerability also just helps kind of mind and body like i said with self-awareness um just with your physical self, what's going on, knowing your limits, um, being vulnerable, asking the questions you may not want, like, oh, like my knee might be hurting a little bit more. Um, I'm getting older, I'm jump more, blah, 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 volleyball, sports, basketball, or maybe school, I'm not remembering as much. Maybe I need to really set more time for my schooling. Again, being just vulnerable or how long, how did I sleep last night? Reflecting on that. And when's the last time you ate? That's a lot, a lot of you, uh, a lot of you people. Um, that's that's becoming a, a, a thing, just making sure you're eating regularly, healthy food, giving yourself that treat and not feeling guilty about it. Um, yeah, just kind of asking those kind of questions is kind of able to help you um, strengthen your relationship with yourself and your mind and body. Um, vulnerability in the workplace. I mean, I'll be practicing this being a counselor. Um, but yeah, just being vulnerable in the workplace but this can help in any situation because um, it can help your imposter syndrome being vulnerable. Cause if you're working for a company, they want you to work well. They want the company to do well. So that means in return, they want you to do well as well. So no one's really like cutthroat unless you're like a lawyer or something. So I can't speak on that, but for the most part, I want to say generally, generally as a company, you guys want to grow together. You guys want to do, succeed, progress as much as you can. And in order to do so, if you have imposter syndrome, being vulnerable is able to strengthen the bonds that you have with your colleagues, your coworkers, your boss, um, interns, anybody above you or below you. And being vulnerable in the workplace allows you to kind of help yourself if you're struggling with that imposter syndrome for those who don't know what imposter syndrome is it's when um you feel like you don't belong there it's when um i had it early on in the clinical counseling master's program i really did not feel like i belonged there i felt everyone was really really smart they were just so such a deep dive into the readings the articles and I was trying to catch up and I just felt very unmotivated because everyone was doing so well and understanding such key aspects that I, I, I struggled with a little bit. Um, and so that that's kind of where my imposter syndrome came out, just kind of the work that it took to be in my master's program. I just didn't think I belonged. Um, that's me being vulnerable with you guys now. So that's, that's a good step, but I don't mind being vulnerable. Um, that's kind of just stemmed from my philosophy of life and stuff. So um, I'm not too worried about other people's opinions per se. Um, I love hearing them, but I don't let them affect me negatively, positively. Um, do, would I like people to like me? Absolutely. Will I be devastated if they don't? No, not really. Um, because I'm going to be me. And if you don't like me for who I am, that is perfectly fine. You're able to do that completely and um i don't want to if you, i'm someone you don't like i don't want to be in your life kind of making or worsening your life in a, in a way you know what i mean so um because i want you to live life best of your ability do what you got to do um but yeah so just vulnerability in the workplace it's a fine line again you still got to keep that line of professionalism but understanding that um all organizations everywhere just want to do the best that they can and they want to see you succeed as well. So practicing vulnerability with colleagues that you trust um, and really strengthen those relationships and bonds and honestly may even help you kind of go up the corporate ladder or whatever kind of dynamic your job may have. Um, yeah. So uh, Mitch, thank you for that comment. Security and vulnerability go hand in hand. So kind of security, just kind of knowing what you're able to do and where you're um, able to go. I'm sorry if I, if I don't, oh, if you secure yourself, yeah, if you secure yourself, it makes it easier to open up to others and vice versa. Yeah. So obviously getting into a job and securing yourself and understanding, um, understanding yourself. And first of all, realizing something like imposter syndrome, understanding that you may be 
like maybe feeling these type of feelings and practicing that um practicing that self and being vulnerable with yourself why am i feeling this way what can i do to think and that that self awareness plus the vuln- self vulnerability will kind of help you secure yourself in feelings that i am supposed to be here this is what i'm supposed to be doing and i'm going to like work harder at this and and move to it just kind of helps you kind of really reflect and get these feelings that, that you may be feeling and understanding why you may be feeling it. So, but yeah, if you, if you secure yourself um, in your job or just in life, the the more things you can control for, and if you're secure and you're not worried about other aspects, you can uh, focus and practice vulnerability to kind of help those, um, those little seeds of security or little seeds of vulnerability grow and those relationships grow um, within Again, work, home, love, life, social life, whatever it may be, I think just kind of really, really practicing and doing whatever you can to kind of become secure because then you have a solid base to kind of start at. And then you're able to kind of take a hit. I say that with a grain of salt. I don't like that. Um, I don't like that verbiage. Um, take the hit. Like if you have a solid base and you're secure, you're able to become you're able to practice vulnerability because if it doesn't go well, which it it possibly can, let me make that very clear, you're able to kind of withstand that and you're able to you can take that as like a form of diversity in a sense that you were vulnerable with someone and it didn't go well. Maybe that's someone that your relationship isn't as strong yet. And maybe that's something to work on your relationship and then practicing vulnerability again. And if it works the next time, you'll see that the relationship has grown and you'll be able to kind of, kind of realize that. But if you're secure in your job and you're doing everything you need to do, crossing off that checklist, to do list and what you need to do, um, you're really able to kind of, Kind of, again, I, I don't like the word take the hit, but that's just the only thing that's coming to my mind right now. You're able to put yourself out there and uh, be ready to kind of, uh, yeah, just uh, just put yourself out there vul- uh, in a vulnerable state. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to comment because now we have two people in the chat. If you're listening right now, um, hold on, I'm going to say... The first nine minutes were muted. Sorry. I am a goof. Uh, But yeah, so I just, again, that's just, I think it's something that we can all work on a little bit more. Um, there are a lot of good things that happen in life and there are a lot of bad things that happen in life. I think we need to be more empathetic as a whole, um, just for other people, because we are all going through something no one knows about. Um, again, like that's the first tattoo I ever got. It's something that I hold dear to my heart still, even to this day, the person that you think has it all together, there's, there's more to every story. And, it's just, it, it's just true. I I have yet to be, I have yet to be, um, I've yet to be shown different. I, I've, I've seen that constant time and time again, that people may feel, or maybe look like they got everything going on, but they're, they're struggling with something else and just be empathetic because in the off chance that they may be going through something, which they most, I would give it about a 90% chance they got something that they're going through just being empathetic is just going to really kind of just help them. It might, it might help them. It might not, but on the off chance it does. Why wouldn't we be more empathetic to one another? Just kind of spreading love and positivity. I just think that it would, um, it would benefit everyone as a whole and as a community and as a collective, as a, a nation or even globally, honestly, just being empathetic that other people may have struggles that you may not know of, you may have struggles that they may not know of, but understanding that we're all struggling, we're all trying to get through this together and doing what we can without um, hurting one another. And I think that's where vulnerability comes in because if you're able to be vulnerable with other people, your sound and not sound, you're comfortable and you're comfortable enough to put yourself out there and be 
prepared to kind of catch the the ass end of things. It kind of it's um it's not always going to be perfect. We we know this, and um, but yeah, just practicing vulnerability, even if it's just with yourself, it's gonna it'll it'll help you it'll help you in your all relationships all across the board. Um, it'll possibly bring up certain aspects that you may need to talk about to strengthen your relationships as well. And just empathy and vulnerability, they're very, they are very cohab, cohabit, cohabitant, cohabitant. I don't know. I think they go hand in hand. I think they are very important. Um, I know them to be very important for my line of work and what um, I intend to do. So I just think it's a, an important thing that I kind of pass this on information unto you. Um, if you have any um, comments or anything that's related to empathy or vulnerability, I'd um, feel free to comment down below. I would, I would always love to come back and reread these. Um, but yeah, so uh, thank you for checking in. Uh, Mitch, thank you for saving me and not letting me waste my time. I had to go a little bit longer than usual, but you're the man. I appreciate you for uh, letting me know that my mic was silent. I should have double checked it. I, I triple checked it. I did double check it, but I must have clicked it by accident. Uh, but yes, yeah, so make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Subscribe is huge. I've been getting a lot of subscribers. I thank you guys for subscribing and watching these. If you do watch these, if you don't, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for checking in. Um, we're making a lot of movement on this channel. Um, when we're, the numbers are starting to go up, love seeing it. And it's because of you guys. Thank you for everything. Um, and let's just keep it getting getting higher. So subscribe. Please stay with the family. If you're not, I got a lot of big things coming in for 2023. Um, but yeah, let's just, let's keep talking about mental health. Let's, let's strengthen ourselves and others and even more than we can right now. Let's talk about it. Let's destigmatize it because there shouldn't be a stigma around it. Everyone's has mental health. Everyone goes through mental health and everyone struggles with mental health eventually. Um, so yeah, I just want to thank you guys again. Thank you for checking in, tuning in, and I will catch you guys next video. Um, quick, uh, quick comment. I do plan on, um, getting a better setup. I know this setup's not too bad, but I want a better quality. I have cameras that have acquired higher quality. So, um, make sure you tune in cause there will be upgrades, uh, coming, coming this year, uh, when it comes to live streams. So, um, can't wait to see those coming. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you guys uh, next Mental Health Monday or any other videos. I got some more coming out this week, so make sure you're subscribed. All right. Thank you, guys.